Hello, and welcome to part three of this video series. If you have not reviewed the other two parts of this series, it's recommended that you start there so some of the concepts that we go through in this demonstration will be familiar with you. To tie everything together, what we're going to do today is to go through a complex end-to-end -end process using all of the capabilities of Redwood Finance Automation. In order to show you what this looks like, we're going to go into what's called the Process Studio. You should be familiar with the Process Studio and its components and the capabilities of Redwood Finance Automation through other videos. Like any automation, this will be autonomous and invisible, so it's important to understand the concepts of how the capabilities work together to construct an end-to-end -end process. So the process that we've chosen to demonstrate today using the capabilities is called an intercompany reconciliation. Most of our customers, most folks in finance and accounting are very familiar with this type of process and a lot of the concepts and the capabilities that we'll show are applicable to really any broad business process that you're looking to automate. So kind of let's just start from these different swim lanes and these boxes are what we call components. You can see the components that are currently used are listed over here to the left hand side and if there's any other components that need to be used you could simply search those up here. So for example if I wanted to view all of the components that I had that related to SAP I could simply type in SAP and then I could filter on the list of components that would be used in a particular process. I'm going to close this down so we have more real estate to work with here, but essentially let's look at some of the capabilities that we're using. In this case, we're actually doing a reconciliation which will involve some matching. So in order to match, we need to go retrieve the data from the source system and then bring that data in and transform it in a way so we can begin the matching. Now most data is not in a format that we could use for matching, but what you'll see, one of the capabilities with Redwood Finance Automation is to take the format that may come in a text file, let's say for example, and put this into a standard structured type format so now we can start to normalize and manipulate the data. So once we've retrieved the data from the two sets or the two sources of data, we're gonna use a capability that's called the transformer. And the transformer is a really powerful capability within Redwood Finance Automation where we can then standardize on data, we can normalize on data, we can perform calculations, and we can do a whole host of things such as concatenating numbers, removing or changing column types. In this example, we're going to use it from a matching perspective and we'll use quite a few of those capabilities. So let's briefly look at what's going on here. We're using the capabilities to actually produce these outputs and it looks pretty confusing at this point in time, but let me just tell you what it's actually doing is taking and breaking this data up into chunks after we've matched and we found some exceptions so we can route it to the proper individuals. A Couple of things as we step into the transformer here, what you'll see are the rules that were used in order to manipulate the data. We see our complete data set, which is all of the items that we've retrieved from a source system. And then we can go in and look and see what those two data sets look like side by side. So here we have source A, which in this case could be a vendor list, source B, which could be a customer list, and we're creating data sets. The next thing we may want to do is to normalize this data. So we maybe add some columns or change the names or remove some columns. In this case, one thing that's important is we know that a combination of account company code and maybe trading partner in this case Together, they may create a unique key that we can use for matching purposes. So if we go into this concatenation functionality that's within the transformer, what you'll see, for example, if we go to one side of the data, is we've created a unique key which should match to the other side of the data. Now we can perform several dif different types of matching. We can match on different types. So maybe we want to match on a description, a date, a, an amount is a common field to match on, or we want to give them some tolerances. So not an exact match on dollar amount, but maybe within a certain threshold, let's say within $100 or whatever threshold you choose to determine would create a match. So we've now created two unique data sets that with a unique key that we can match on. And the next thing that we want to do is then group those matches because ultimately what we're trying to do is to find exceptions. These matches can match a one-to-one, -one, a one-to-many, many to one, many to many, many to all, and partial matches. And so every time a match is created, if we go over here to the far right hand side, you'll see that this match is given a matching number which corresponds to another side on this data set. 
what we're truly trying to get to are those items that don't match because those create exceptions and now we can move through the rest of the process. As you can see, there's a lot of other capabilities within the transformer and we would be happy to kind of go through all of those capabilities, but just as a rule of thumb, essentially anything that you can do in Excel can be done in the data transformer and all the rules would be present. So every time this process runs, we're taking a data source and converting that into meaningful data that we can use as part of the process. If we go on through here, let's highlight another capability that's, that's included within the capabilities. So after we've matched the data, we have exceptions. Not all exceptions are treated diff, diff, or the same, so we can actually read the data and then route that to the proper individuals. We have mapping tables up here, so we know exactly where the data should go, where the exception should go, and we've also created a loop. So we don't have to recreate this process four times, we've actually given it four iterations. So the different unique combinations are now ran through from a loop perspective, and the exceptions are then routed to the proper individual who's highlighted in this, this accountant table up here. And then finally, once this information has been completed, we're taking a the other steps to where we're actually creating the exception management or the resolution to these exceptions by creating a file. In this case, we're creating a journal entry using Excel and we're posting that journal entry on behalf of those differences. We're sending out a summary email and confirming that the proper postings have been made according to the policies and the rules on this particular type of reconciliation. Now let's run through this and show you what it would look like from an end user's perspective. And again, with true automation, you're not going to really see anything happening. We're going to deliver what's happening in the way that an individual would normally work. So another capability is the ability to then send notifications and or workflows to an individual's email. So let's go ahead and go into the intercompany reconciliation start screen. And here I'm just going to kick this process off manually. Now, another one of the capabilities that are included in Redwood Finance Automation is the ability to schedule these type of activities. So typically, you would not start this manually. This would just happen as maybe part of a checklist or as part of a trigger or it would be as part of a schedule, for example. But if I want to know the status of what's going on, over here, I have the steps that we just went through in the process studio, and I can see as every task is complete within this process, I'll actually get an indicator that shows me that the task is completed as part of the end-to-end -end process. Now, as mentioned before, this is what the individuals that are working within this process would typically see. Now, all the mails have been delivered to me through a loop. What these messages are are simply to show this individual that after the matching routine, there were exceptions where in our case, the customer list and the vendor list didn't match based on the rules that we had configured from the matching perspective. So I've been sent a list of exceptions that typically someone would have to follow up on in a manual world. But what we're able to do is not just notify an individual that there is a list of differences. We're actually able to then take that same list and use that data from the transformer to populate an Excel spreadsheet or a typical journal upload file, in this case Excel, using those same differences that were just sent to the individual. To take it a step further, using additional capabilities, we are able to then take this upload file and send this to the source system or the ERP in order to post this or to put the data or to send the data, to push the data to. In this case, it's a journal, so we're posting the data. Once this is complete, I'm sent a notification that's basically going to show me a summary of what's happened. So I know for each individual company code in this case and the counterpart, the amount that has been posted on each other's behalf. And I can also see that these amounts balance. So this is an important kind of notification or verification from an accountant's perspective in this case that the proper summary has been sent and the right amounts have been posted. So this would be an example of a notification capability within the platform. So finally, to prove that automation had worked from end to end and that everything had been done in terms of finding the exceptions and posting to the proper accounts and having the summary, we wanna be able to see everything that's happened. So included within the capabilities are archiving functionality. So if I click on the archiving icon, I can go to my inner company for examples, that's the process we looked at, and then click on the unique process ID 
And here I can see everything that happened in a summary type structure. So anyone that needs to come back and look at this from an audit perspective can see everything that's happened. We can see the list of issues, the list of issues by company code in this case, the journal that was created and the Excel file that proves the journal from the issues we discovered. We can see the different files that were used to post. And then finally, we can see the summary of how the different postings we created actually balanced um, from a debits and credits perspective, let's say in this case. So hopefully this video was able to demonstrate the concepts that we had shown in part one and part two of this series. Part three, again, we were trying to take those concepts, which are basically capabilities that are included within the Redwood Finance Automation platform, and then put those together to create a complex end-to-end -end process, again, that is very common with a lot of the customers that we deal with. But not just from an intercompany perspective, which happened to be this example, but the capabilities that are included are really used to automate and orchestrate and organize any end-to-end -end business process. So I hope this video was beneficial. Again, if you haven't seen parts one and two, please check those out. And if you're on YouTube, please search us up and look up any of the other videos that we have out there, and hopefully they'll be helpful for you. Thanks.